Uh, hey, it's Joel, the 3D Printing Nerd. I've got a cool print to show you, but before that, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's sponsor is me and my new shirts. Look at that. This is Robot Joel, the little 3 dpn robot that Lady Muse designed for me, plus two other shirts. This awesome design by Fool Wizard, and this suite designed by Chris-Rob. Shirts are high quality shirts. I can be shipping them anywhere in the world. Domestic shipping is cheap. International shipping is cheap. Items can be combined. I kept t-shirts at 15 bucks. Nothing. Shirts can be had in any color with any logo. I've also got hoodies available uh, and more stuff coming up in the shop. So if you go to the3dprintingnerd.com forward slash shop, it'll take you to where you need to go to get your own. All right, well now let's talk about that cool print. It's Disney related, which makes me excited because I like Disney and I like Disneyland. A user by the name of Victor Vasquez in the Creality CR10 3D printer user group showed off a really cool photogrammetry inspired model of the Haunted Mansion plaque from the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Victor wrote, I did this because it gave me a memory of a time of my life when I felt happy after the deaths of my brother, my best friend and my coworker. I went to Disney to release all that sadness, and it worked. I felt alive again. I was my old self and felt like taking a memento from the park so that I wouldn't forget that day. Well, that's really awesome. Victor, I'm very sorry to hear about the loss of life in your life, but that's great that you were able to go to Disney, and that's great that you were able to get yourself a memento. Victor used photogrammetry, so he took a bunch of reference photos of the Haunted Mansion plaque and brought it into software that combines those photos into a 3D model. He then worked the 3D model a little bit and came up with what you see. The problem was the house of the mouse is very aggressive in defending what's theirs and they did make him remove it from Thingiverse. However, well, I'm in the group and the file was in the group which meant I could still print it. I first started printing it on the Zortrax with ZPLA and I ran into two issues. One of the issues was Z-Suite, Zortrax Slicer, took 12 hours to slice this model. I'm not joking. I can't even believe I'm saying it. 12 hours on this PC right here. Once it got done though, I was able to start the print. The print was going as you can see and it should have worked out just fine, but then sadness. The print did not complete. I experienced a jam. No matter. And these wraps aren't easy to remove. Let's try that again. Printing, printing, printing. Oh, and look, another jam. This raft was a little bit easier to remove. The problem was we were having some hot temperatures here in the Northwest that didn't really contribute to the goodness inside the printer. And the Zortrax experienced a jam with some heat creep because it's in the garage, it gets hot in here, it's not insulated. They said there is a fix which makes me think that it wasn't heat creep, maybe it was a profile issue. And they say there's a fix in Z Suite coming out soon. So until that happens, we're gonna put the Zortrax off to the side. However, how can I do this? I do happen to have the FormBot T-Rex 2 finally unboxed, put together, and ready to print something. And they included a roll of no-name white PLA. I figured maybe this is it. So here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to print this on the FormBot T-Rex 2 and I wanted to use their PLA. I was going to use a Simplify 3D profile included on the SD card. And the idea was when the model was printing the lower part of it, I wanted a higher layer height and not as much infill to save on the plastic. And then once it got to the part where the model needed to get more infill to support top layers, I could have it do that. And I could use the new Simplify 3D feature in its 4.0 software called the Variable Settings Wizard. The Variable Settings Wizard is kind of neat. It allows you to take a process and split it at different heights. And for this one, I figured I could split it right around six millimeters. And at six millimeters, this was great because it would create a bottom process and it would create a top process. So once those processes were created, I could go into each one and define the settings. So on the bottom process, I wanted 10% infill. 
and I could tell that according to the settings, it was set to stop printing at six millimeters in Z height. The bottom one also had 0.2 millimeter layer height. It should be okay. Now when we move to the top process, I made sure that the infill was set to 30% rather than 10 because I wanted more support for those top layers that needed to be printed. I also changed the layer height to 0.1. Once top and bottom processes were done, I just had to prepare to print. So I hit the button and it asked me how I wanted to do it. I made sure to select print sequentially because I wanted them to print all at once. I hit okay. Simplify 3D, chewed on the model for a little bit. And once it got done forming the G code for the model, it then loaded the G code and showed it to us in the preview. And in the preview, we can see that the model is looking great. I mean, for photogrammetry and a little bit of fix up, it really turned out great. As we go through this process, you can see that there's 10% infill, and then as it gets to six millimeters in Z height, it switches over to 30% infill. Well, this is great. Now all we have to do is send it to the FormBot T-Rex 2 to print, so let's do that. The print is done, we got it off the T-Rex, and it looks amazing. I am incredibly impressed with this printer. So, I haven't had it very long. This is technically the second print I've done on the machine. After it leveled the bed, it just laid down smooth layers of plastic, layer after layer, and it came up with this. And it looks fantastic. Well, the top layers look great. And the photogrammetry looks great. It, this is, it just came out, this is awesome. Victor, you did an amazing job, and I'm really sorry the House of the Mouse made you take it down from Thingiverse, but man, thanks for this model. Just in case, I did print it twice. Here we go. Here they are. This is cool. So now what I'm going to do is try different finishing techniques on this. Because the Haunted Mansion plaque is, I think it's a, it's a brass with a little bit of green or some rust on it. So the idea is to try to replicate that using these plastic models. I'm going to enlist the help of Bill from Punish Props and using his expertise and his knowledge, I will get these looking fantastic. All right, well, this is cool. This is a good model. Again, Victor, thank you so much for posting this model. If you yourself wanna print this, I'm really sorry. I can't link you to the model. However, I believe in this video, I've given you enough clues for you to be able to find it yourself. And if you do print this, tag me in the photo. I'd love to see how it turns out. All right, that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I've got these cool new t-shirts for sale. Link is down in the description and I have them priced incredibly well. So you won't break the bank and you will look stellar. Big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red and for everybody that lets the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, watch out for the Hatbox Ghost and high five.